Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Friday COVID combos. Let me type this out so I can pin it. There we go. Hello. Yes, me. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I finally meet you in real life. And <laughs> That's true. Today, you guys, for COVID combos, I will be inter interviewing a fellow ambassador, Miss Page. If y'all don't know who Miss Page is, she's gonna give herself a quick introduction so y'all can know who she is. Oh, thanks so much. I'm Paige Riley. Um, I'm a I'm a pediatrician. I work in Chicago, and I'm currently training at UIC. Um, as a pediatric hematologist. And so I work with um, Dr. Lewis Sue, Jocelyn Mallard, who I feel like are both celebrities in our little world. And I feel very fortunate to be learning from them and working from them. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Okay, okay. So what has been your experience with working in the field of sickle cell? It's been wonderful so far. And um, like I said, I, I work mostly with pediatric patients, um, actually exclusively with pediatric patients and with some young adult patients. Um, okay. in many, many settings in a clinic setting, in, um, you know, an inpatient hospital setting and in the emergency room. And then too, as you mentioned, um, I'm a pretty new ambassador with the Six Cells program. So I think, you know, using those opportunities to learn how to um, you know, advocate for our warriors in our communities, um, in our governments, um, has been amazing too, and really great experience. Yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Um, so I re during this interview, we really want to talk about um, your experiences during this pandemic, because this is COVID combos. So some people, what do you feel like you can speak about from your experience working in a clinical setting during the pandemic that some people may be shocked or surprised to hear in relation to sickle cell and COVID? That's a great question. And I think, um, and I think it's a really important question because there's a lot of fear about COVID, um, especially in patients with sickle cell disease, because as we all know, you know, um, people with sickle cell disease are at increased risk of severe COVID, but it's also important to remember that the majority of cases um, are still, you know, mild or even asymptomatic. Um, I think what's been surprising to me is that, um, you know, even personally, a, a lot of the patients I've taken care of is that um, pain is the most common complaint of uh, COVID infection in patients with sickle cell disease. Um, and that we've seen a lot of, you know, kids again, in my field, um, who are coming in with a crisis that just doesn't seem quite, you know, like what they're used to, mm -hmm. seems just a little bit different somehow. And then, um, you know, there's a lot of frustration around that because, you know, we have a hard time managing it like we expect, um, you know, in the cases of when they're hospitalized, the hospitalization doesn't quite sort of go as we would expect. Um, we find out that, oh my gosh, they have an acute or, or a new COVID infection the whole time. And, and that kind of sort of pulls the whole picture together and explains a lot, um, especially in these situations that, you know, are, are not as straightforward and are a little bit confusing to both, you know, the patient, their families, and to us as, as their doctors as well. So I think that's been the most surprising thing for sure. Right, mm -hmm. okay. And since you do work in pediatrics, I know for, you know, a lot of kids can't get the COVID vaccine, but you say you do work with some, you see some young adults as well. Have you seen any instances of cases of young adults that have gotten the vaccine and they went into a crisis due to the side effects of the vaccine? Great question. And I think that's probably the most common question we get. And, and that's, you know, I think people's biggest fear or, or reluctance to get the vaccine. Personally, no, I've never seen that. Um, but it certainly has been reported. Um, I think overall, the, um, the kind of side effects of the vaccine are similar in um, people with sickle cell disease compared to people without sickle cell disease. So things like a sore arm, um, a bit of a fever, maybe some fatigue um, certainly occur. 
But the important thing to remember is that, um, you know, this will go away after, you know, one, two, three days, you know, it doesn't last for a long time. It's a, it's a short thing that I guarantee will end and that, and that you will get over. And then again, number two, the, the, even more important thing to remember is that the point of getting the vaccine is to prevent um, going to the hospital, you know, getting a COVID infection that is so severe that you wind up in the hospital, you wind up, you know, with a pneumonia and acute chest, um, or like I said, a, a painful crisis that is, that is difficult to manage, difficult to control, and, um, you know, different than, than a typical um, episode. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so are you aware of any latest or important updates that the sickle cell community should know about? Yes. So like we just talked about vaccines, 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 um, especially now for children over the age of five. Mm -hmm. So um, the vaccines for kids are the identical vaccines as the adults get. And as we know, you know, we've had billions and billions and billions of uh, vaccines given out at this point. And so we know that they're safe. We know that they work. Um, and we know that they are very, very effective at um, you know, preventing severe disease, preventing hospitalization, like we talked about. So the children get the exact same vaccine, just at a lower dose. And um, just like what's coming out now is, um, you know, we're finding that the that kids um, don't really have as many side effects from the vaccines as adults because they do get the lower dose. And mm -hmm. I heard in the news that, um, that the vaccine, the effectiveness of the vaccine kind of tends to peter out over time and get less effective. We aren't we don't think we're really seeing that in kids though either just because of the way their immune systems work they're more able to kind of keep that um immunity for much longer than mm -hmm. the adults do so that's all really good so yeah i'm i'm really, really wow yeah and then finally too the other thing that's important to know is that um people with sickle cell disease are all eligible for the neutralizing antibody if they do come down with covid mm. This is just kind of like a heavy dose, like a power, like a concentrated dose of, um, of the antibodies that attack COVID directly. So um, while your sort of own body, your own immune system is kind of gearing up to attack COVID if you do have a COVID infection, um, what the neutralizing antibody does is it kind of gives you a head start. It gives you um, a little bit of, um, you know, a, like a, a running jump to attack um, the COVID before your body really gets going. Um, you can get this. The whole point of this is, again, to prevent going from the hospital. So uh, going to the hospital. So if you have some symptoms, not quite sure, you find out you have a COVID infection, the first thing I would recommend is calling your doctor, calling your hematologist saying, hey, do you think I should go get this neutralizing antibody? Um, it's eligible for um, everyone over the age of 12 and who weighs at least 88 pounds. And, um, you know, I've had patients who, who have gotten it don't end up in the hospital, seem to do really well. Um, and it's definitely something else I would recommend too. Well, that's really amazing to know. Wow. Okay. So to close this interview out, do you have any advice for any caregivers of, you know, they have kids or family members with sickle cell that are in school? Do you have any advice for them during this pandemic? Yes. And I think this is a really, really important question and a really important thing to talk about because, you know, as the world is opening up, as schools especially are opening up, I think the anxiety about COVID, you know, is, is really heightening as well. So um, number one, I think, I think it's really important for parents, for caregivers to feel heard and to feel seen by, you know, their child's school. You know, make sure you have a good, um, channel of communication with teachers, with the principal, with the school itself. And if you don't feel like you do, then I think that's a problem. And I think that that's also um, some place that, you know, your child's pediatrician, their hematologist can certainly help with um, and help you advocate for your child in the school setting. And then number two, I think the best resource um, is from the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. So if you Google SCADA back to school COVID resources, what they've done is they've kind of compiled this really, you know, really comprehensive checklist about what to look for in the schools, what's important to ask the teachers, what's important to ask the principals to kind of help, you know, parents and caregivers to sort of make their decisions about what's best for their students. Because you know, while it's important to um, keep our kids safe from COVID, keep our kids healthy, um, you know, we want them to also benefit from, you know, in-person learning and, you know, 
being with friends and being with the teachers and everything too. So, um, you know, I think I encourage every family to do what's best for them and um, do, you know, what they feel comfortable with. And again, I think um, having good open communication with the teachers and with the schools is really, really key. Okay. All right. Um, for anybody that is tuned in, we still have some time. So please, yes, drop some questions in the chat. I will answer it maybe at least two. But if you don't have any questions, that is okay. But yeah, please, if you have any added questions, go ahead and drop them now. These are all really good questions. And I think, again, too, the, I think the other thing, too, I'm just going to fill time, is, um, you know, this is still kind of a moving target, too. So we're we're getting a lot of new information. We're still learning a lot, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's an important thing to keep in mind also. Like, as, as we learn more, we'll adapt and we'll keep giving out these recommendations. And so that's why I think these conversations are so great and so important. I can definitely agree because just for myself personally, I have been learning – a lot of great information just with these interviews, especially with this interview today, because I had no idea about the whole, you know, the antibody thing you were talking about earlier. That's really great to yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's 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 important to get the word out and to you know spread this knowledge to everyone. Yeah, I could definitely agree with that. No one has any questions. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Oh no, well that is. Okay, I think the questions that I did ask, you know, mm -hmm. were pretty good in getting a lot of information out. It was a pleasure speaking with you and finally meeting you, Paige. This is so fun. Maybe, you know, next time we can do more meeting and hopefully meet in person someday. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I don't want to hold you up. Thank you for, you know, coming to be interviewed. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. Thank you, you guys, for joining this Friday's COVID combo. Like always, we'll be back every Friday. So tune in next Friday around 3 p.m. Central, St Central Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another COVID combo. Thank you for tuning in and bye. <laughs>